Good afternoon, everyone. Hi there. Welcome. For those of you who don't know, I'm Stephanie Purseller, the Sustainability Manager here at Moraine Valley Community College, and today we have a very spectacular program for you. Um, we have interns presenting from the Illinois EPA who have been working at three different colleges in the Chicagoland area. They're going to present to you on their findings of waste minimization uh, projects. But before they do that, I'd like to um, introduce Rick Reese, the program intern coordinator for the Illinois EPA, who'd like to say a few words. Thanks, Stephanie, and I appreciate Moraine Valley Community College hosting this today. Uh, we have three presentations today. We have six down in uh, Springfield tomorrow morning at our headquarters for the EPA. Uh, we're a state agency. And then we've got another uh, six, or six in Springfield. And then on Thursday, we have five presentations uh, in Southern Illinois that will finish us up for a total of 14 students. Um, our program has been in existence since 1989. Uh, we started out with two students from the Illinois Institute of Technology. And we had as many as 27 in 1998. Uh, we've had to scale back a little bit because of funding. And also our staff has been cut, but realistically we're right around the 14 to 15 students every summer. Um, the main focus of, of the internship program is not only to allow the students to go out and participate in industry or to work at a host organization for the summer, but they also get to make an impact on, on the facility in which they're working. Uh, our main focus has been sustainability since 1989. Uh, more, more along the lines of pollution prevention and source reduction, but we not only get involved in that, it's also wastewater conservation and energy efficiency, which seems to be a big topic. Uh, the US EPA now is looking, and they have proposed new rules for their Clean Air Act, and uh, by the state of Illinois, by the year 2030, is supposed to reduce their greenhouse gas emission reductions by 33%. And those are in proposed rules that are out for public comment. So it makes the intern students that more valuable to uh, industry and also to uh, other host organizations that we have. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the mic over. We've got three presentations, like I mentioned. Uh, Kyle Burkhoff from Northern Illinois University in DeKalb will talk to you about iGen and what he did this summer. Okay. Hello, everybody. Like Richard said, my name is Kyle Burkoff, and I go to Northern Illinois University. And for my EPA summer internship, I was partnered with the Illinois Green Economy Network. And in the following slides, I will be referring to the organization as iGen. So first off, what is iGen? Well, it was created in 2008 and is a consortium of all 48 community colleges in Illinois and is led by a president's steering committee. IGEN's mission is to provide a platform for collaboration amongst the community colleges in order to uh, develop uh, clean energy technologies and identifying and sharing of best practices. IGEN, IGEN gets funding from various sources such as DCEO, Department of Education and Energy, and uh, the Lieutenant Governor and Governor's Office. It also depends on the uh, project that iGen is working on as well. Uh, for instance, over the course of the summer, iGen hosted an uh, electric vehicle road trip where we had drivers drive all the way from southern Illinois to the top of Illinois, finishing up at the College of Lake County. And we got support from that from the Illinois Office of Tourism. Now iGen focuses on seven statewide green economic development opportunities, being energy innovation, career pathways, EV and biofuels, building energy efficiency, community food, advanced manufacturing, and freshwater resources. Some intern or <laughs> the two internship deliverables that I'd like to focus on, on this, in this presentation are the creation of uh, How To, also known as a best, pra best practice package that I created over the course of the summer, and carrying out a greenhouse gas inventory at the College of Lake County.
Some additional outcomes of my internship was help with getting vendor support for the iGen Smart Gridology kiosk, uh, coordination for the EV road trip on behalf of the College of Lake County, like I mentioned before. Um, the EV road trip actually finished at the College of Lake County. However, the College of Lake County does not have an electrical vehicle charging station. So it was, uh, we had to reach out to different vendors and get uh, support and sponsorship, sponsorship in order to get a charging station installed. And then a development of future iGen internship program as well. So first off, what is the best practice package? It's a guide for implement, implementing a sustainability procedure in this context. It can be um, applied to various different uh, companies or in the business world, but in this uh, context, it's a sustainability procedure. It includes resource ex examples and strategies for implementing uh, implementation. And then uh, best practice packages are typically constantly changing because there's always new and better ways of how to uh, implement a specific procedure. And then an example of this is actually the US EPA has a document called the Clean Energy Environment Guide to Action. However, one thing um, when creating a best practice package and one thing I came across uh, while I was creating mine is uh, that every a best practice package doesn't always fit a specific institution's needs. And so it's best when creating a best practice package to keep it somewhat broad. That way any institution can come along and tailor it to what their specific college needs at the moment. So why specifically did I do a greenhouse gas inventory best package? Well, at the moment, many institutions are either creating or updating their own versions of a sustainability plan, climate action plan, or something along those lines. And the data gathered from a greenhouse gas inventory is essential when uh, creating or updating these documents. So if we can come up with a document, the best practice package, that will help whoever is conducting this greenhouse gas inventory do it more efficiently and quickly, it'll help the process as a whole Now, uh, I mentioned before a sustainability plan in the last slide, and I think I did before. So uh, what exactly is a sustainability plan? It's a, a guide that outlines an a institution's strategic goals, um, plans for implementation, and the, how they're going to reach those goals. Like I said, the outlines the goals and the specific measures for an institution to accomplish uh, their emissions goals. In conjunction with the greenhouse gas inventory best package I created, I actually conducted a greenhouse gas inventory at the College of Lake County. And what this uh, greenhouse gas inventory is, is it's uh, simply accounting for all the emissions being released into the atmosphere. Now, a greenhouse gas inventory can take anywhere from a few days all the way to a few months. And in my case, it took about a few months, uh, mainly because there's three main scopes of a greenhouse gas inventory. Um, the third scope being, and what I had most difficulty with, is uh, commuting uh, data. So I had to figure out how many students, faculty and staff, went to the College of Lake County, how many average number of trips they were making, the number of miles they were making, and find that relationship between the amount of CO2 or whatever greenhouse gas we're measuring uh, is being released from this. A greenhouse gas is very beneficial for a specifically uh, institution to conduct because it allows the institution to quantify the emissions. That way they can measure that the policies they put into place in the past are actually helping them reach, reach the emission goals that they are trying to meet. So the final product as far as the uh, greenhouse gas inventory best package must be reviewed by IGEN administration before it can be implemented. Imp implemented, <laughs> sorry, and it can be found on the iGen website. And then uh, as far as the greenhouse gas inventory that I conducted at the College of Lake County, it's still in the process of being used to update 
uh, CLC's sustainability plan. In conclusion, I'd like to thank the ILEPA, as well as iGen, of course, for this great opportunity to uh, improve many skill sets, such as presentation skills, time management, um, oral and written communication, just to name a few. And if anybody has any questions, concerns, uh, or just like to learn more about what iGen is and what they do, feel free to visit the iGen website at www.igencc.org. Is there any questions or concerns that I can address uh, within the crowd? One second, please. Uh, when you actually quantified uh, the commuting of, uh, was it College of Lake County? Yes. All right. Uh, were those self-reported uh, information, or you actually did the tracking, and from what point to which point? Well, at first, I had to find out how many faculty, staff, and um, students attend the College of Lake County. And in order to get, gather that information, I used the Illinois College Board um, I don't remember the specific name of the website, but it's a government-run website that institutions report all their uh, data to. So I got all the information from there. And then we actually, um, I was working alongside the sustainability manager at the College of Lake County, and we turned that information over to the GIS person, and he was able to determine how many students were coming from which district, and then uh, what the average number of miles was. Once I uh, obtained that information, I had to uh, what was it? come up with a lot of uh, Excel uh, formulas to interpolate out. Uh, if we know they're traveling this distance to this distance, how many, well, one question I had to ask first was um, how many trips are they making per week? Once I knew that and I knew how many distances they were making, I used the Excel formulas that I created to interpolate out all the data. Any other questions? No? All right, well, thank you everybody for being here. And have a nice day. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. That was an awesome presentation. I believe next is Tim. Hello everyone, my name is Tim Marshall. I'm uh, the intern here, here from the Illinois EPA, working with Moraine Valley Community College on the, on the Pollution Prevention Internship. Uh, the goal of my internship was to reduce uh, some landfill campus-wide, as well as increase recycling capture and create educational materials and promote recycling campus-wide. I wanted to, to increase the, the sustainable practices on behalf of the college as well as identifies the best practices for college waste management. This inclu included uh, implementing a better practices campus-wide. Currently, uh, the college has rather poor waste management. The bins, if you notice in the hallways, are, are almost randomly placed. A few of them do not have recycling bins nearby. There's landfill bins at every office desk, as is pretty similar amongst all businesses. Right now, there's improper signage and, and it's inconsistent. Most of the bins don't have the sign. Right now, they don't have a very accurate information. In fact, some of the information on the grinding plastics we do not accept. And there's a lack of recycling information across the campus. Right now, well, some of the issues we have with waste management are landfilling hazardous waste. There's too many waste bins and not enough recycling bins. This uh, means people are going to be going to their nearest bin to recycle the waste instead of going to where it should be. There's large amounts of waste coming to the college from students bringing in disposable drink containers, uh, single-use food containers, uh, things like coffee beverages in the morning. A lot of the students and faculty are not uh, uh, properly informed on proper waste management techniques. Recycling isn't uh, implemented in a lot of the classroom information. 
Some of the night staff in departments don't properly dispose of their waste, leading to cardboard and other recyclables being found in the dumpsters. Well, uh, I ended up doing a waste audit to see where issues, uh, see where the issues were, so I could design a plan that's tailor made for the college. Uh, that these, this is the, what I'm going to be presenting is a summary of the waste audits, my findings, and the changes that I've implemented across the campus. The first building I did a survey of was A building. This is primarily a classroom building. There's lots of hallways, and there are very few staff and faculty. There's a lot of student waste, and there are too many landfill bins per recycling bin. Most of the times, if you walked down the campus before I implemented the program, you would see a landfill bin by itself, maybe a recycling bin down the hall. There are also signs posted throughout the campus that uh, don't have the proper information regarding recycling. This is the initial uh, waste and recycling distribution data from, from the first waste audit. You see here that, that the majority of the landfill is waste, but a large portion of it is recycling. And over here, you can see in the, in the recycling portion, this was the amount of, of landfill and recycling that was found in the recycling bins themselves. About 25% 20 of the recycling was landfill. And with the waste hauler that Moraine Valley is contracted with, if more than 10% of the recycling is landfill, the entire shipment will be sent to the landfill and none of it will be recycled. Some of the changes I made in this building included improving signage. Uh, I created a two, two new signs, a recycling and a landfill sign. This is the recycling sign. It included pictures of, of, of common items that I found inside uh, in, in the waste audit. Uh, these are things that most students normally have and faculty as well. The landfill poster were, were things that were commonly found in the recycling bins that I didn't want to see there anymore. And so things like uh, chip bags, candy wrappers, paper towels, these are things that uh, most people would consider recyclable but unfortunately are not. Polystyrene is rather difficult to recycle, which is why it's not accepted by our uh, waste hauler. Coffee cups and other disposals, single-use paper items. Those have a waxy liner, um, and that's why those cannot be recycled. Same, uh, the same thing for pizza boxes, because they have animal fats, uh, which hinder the recycling process. I also re reduced the amount of, of landfill bins that were in the area. Also, some classrooms didn't have any landfill or recycling bins, so I put, put those in where they were needed. I, I conducted a survey of the students that uh, used the U building, and some of their main concerns were that the signs didn't do an adequate job of presenting the recycling information and what was landfilled. And they also uh, didn't like how infrequently some of the bins were placed. You could walk down the hallway without seeing a single one. After doing a final waste audit of the A building, I noted that landfill was, was reduced, recycling was, was increased, and the w waste management was improved. This is a before and after chart of, of the waste composition for a building. This is the same graph as, uh, as the previous slide. You can see it, the recycling and the waste aren't very good. Over here, uh, we can see that the recycling in, in the waste has been decreased, and a building recycling has, in fact, gone up. The total amount of waste that, that we sorted uh, initially is greater than the amount of waste we sorted in the post pilot, but still you can see that the amount of recycling increased. So there was a pretty good improvement in the amount of recycling. Also, some of the waste was diverted. This is a breakdown of of the of the final waste audit. You can see that that plastic made up of the majority of the recyclables in the landfill. Uh, there is more information put out about plastics about which types are recyclable. There's a, a number of different resins and only certain companies accept uh, different types. Plastics and paper made up the majority of the recyclables and those are, are very common things that you would find in college campus, things like notebook paper, use books, plastic cups and bottles. This, was, this is a picture of two of the, of the bins in the downstairs A building after the waste audit. Specifically, this is in uh, the Sheriff's Department office, a group that's notorious for not having a proper waste disposal habits. They, after, after just a few days of having these signs up, I noticed uh, 
uh, similar events like this where the recycling would be increased and there'd be very few things in the landfill. This picture of the actual waste audit itself. So yeah, after we're, we uh, implement these signs, there's very little garbage. In fact, you can almost barely see it. We have boxes and bags of paper and a cardboard box overflowing with, with plastic bottles, a large number of aluminum cans as well. I recommend that the bin placement be consistent so that people don't get confused about where the waste should go. They should need, the bins need to stay with the posters so that people don't, don't get confused. Um, Stephanie and I have gone to talk with marketing about having some new posters made up, specifically with getting uh, pictures of images that are unique to Moraine Valley. Things uh, like cafe waste, where they have the uh, pizza boxes and uh, Hard, uh, hard plastic recyclable containers. Instructors should also include a message on, about uh, recycling in the first, day, uh, the first day of class so that the students are informed of, of what is recyclable on campus and, and how that the program around here works. The next area that, that I uh, performed an audit of is this library and CTL areas at the Center for Teaching and Learning. A lot of the issues that I noticed here were similar across the campus. Inadequate signage, poor bin placement, too many landfill bins, and recycling knowledge gaps. Before uh, I came in here, you would uh, see uh, landfill bins at, in other places. Uh, these rooms, for example, only had uh, landfill bins. Uh, a lot of the bins weren't uh, posted near the entrances. They were off in a corner somewhere away from high traffic areas. The signs, are, there were only a few signs posted in the library, so I went around and made sure that each Landfill and recycling bin had their own poster. This is a initial waste audit comparison. The library itself has a large amount of recyclables, mainly paper. The, the staff and faculty in this area do a really good job of recycling, but the waste area is where they need improvement the most. You see about 25% of the library waste was recyclables as well. So all those were being sent to the landfill. And the changes I made in this area include removal of over 20 landfill bins. This was a part of a two-sided waste plan to, to uh, work with what was that? the CTL and library offices, offices to get a streamlined waste capture layout. This includes removing the desk side bins and replacing them with tall landfill and recycling cans. This makes it easier for, for the custodial staff as well as reduces the amount of, amount of waste generated by the, the desk side the landfill bins. Circulation and tech services received desk side recycling bins in place of desk side landfill bins. There's a lot of uh, paper waste that's generated in those areas and not a lot of actual landfill. So to, to address uh, this issue and make it e easier on them, I replace each of those bins with recycling cans. After a, a month of having this uh, program, the users seem to, to, to like it better than the old layout. <coughs> Excuse me. Also made sure all the bins were repaired that weren't up part of the first two places, the signs are in here as well, and pass out some educational cards to be used as a desk side reference. It was a two-sided four by six note card. On one side you had what was recyclable, and the other side was what was not recyclable. The posters uh, went, did a pretty good job of, of showing what was to be recycled and thrown away in a very intuitive manner, so you would just walk to the signs get an idea of what your item was and throw where it belonged. But this is when uh, people had questions about whether they should be recycling and what should be thrown away. These were, this includes a larger list of things I found in my waste audit and actually shows which resin codes are accepted in, by the college's waste system. After the one month pilot, I found that recycling was increased and waste management was improved. The landfill had had uh, less recycling in it, and the recycling had less landfill. And it, it seems that the best plan is dependent upon the office. If the office is an area that they use has a lot of uh, paper and recycling waste, then they could, would benefit from the desk side recycling bins. Other offices, like the Center for Teaching and Learning, they do not uh, generate a large amount of waste, so they, would, would, they benefited more from having the centralized waste collection stream with just two bins, two or four bins in central areas for people to, to, to place their waste. 
This is a comparison of the before and after. This is the initial waste audit. This is the, the final. Initially, I had a library that the library public and office space combined. But for the final waste audit, I, I separated the two so you could see the difference between recycling of the staff and recycling of the students. In both cases, the amount of, of landfill in the recycling has been re amount of landfill in the recycling has been reduced, and recycling capture overall has been increased. Recommend that, that the changes be maintained and that we continue to pass out educational materials to the people that use this area so they can be informed on the best recycling practices. We can implement these programs throughout the offices. If they uh, like the changes that were made, they can keep them or go to one of the other plans. And the posters will also be updated with the newest versions for marketing. The last area where I conducted a survey was the U building and the cafe, cafe being the cafeteria where a lot of uh, where students and staff and faculty go for, to have lunch in the afternoons. The U building included the Glacier office, student life, student government, as well as uh, the games, or as well as the activities department. This area had poor bin placement, inadequate signage, too many landfill bins, and the cafe recycling bins were about 50-50 landfill and recycling. In, in the cafeteria, the, there, were, there were four uh, supporting the columns. Each of those had a, a landfill bin beside them, as they were the closest ones, closest bins uh, to, to go to when people were leaving. They would throw all, all their waste, no matter what it was, in those bins. And there were too many uh, landfill bins in the offices. Uh, the, the Glacier office, for example, has had about oh, I believe it was ten uh, landfill bins, and then each one of those was at their own uh, desk side area. So I each of those were to be removed. I removed a total of 26 landfill bins for, from the area, streamlined the waste capture system for, for the offices. Each uh, of the office areas got, their, got a, a landfill and a recycling bin. This saved a, a lot of money overall in the cost of landliners, and I will cover that in a little bit. Posters were replaced, so each, uh, each bin had its own poster. This included updated posters for the, for the cafeteria. Instead of cardboard boxes, I included images of a clean and a, and a fused uh, paper boat tray on the, the recycling and the landfill poster. And made sure that each of the landfill and recycling bins were repaired in the cafe. And uh, of those four, or those four landfill bins that I mentioned earlier, I replaced two of those with recycling bins. So that wherever they went, they would have a place to dispose of their waste properly. This included placing two more bins near one of the other entrances, so each of the four exits and entrances could have uh, bins close to them for ease of disposal. At the end of the project, I noticed that waste and recycling capture was improved and the users were happy with the bin changes. They liked the fact that there was less clutter in the offices and that they would be saving money. This is an another comparison of the before and after audits. Cafe, as you can see, has about 50-50 waste and recycling. After the changes, it went to about 33-66. Not perfect, but it, it was still an improvement and, no, and showed that people were paying attention to the signs. Over here in the office uh, areas, you can see uh, there was a large amount of recycling in the landfill. When, uh, when I first did the waste audit, there, there was an issue with bin placement, and some of the bins had been switched around, and the landfill bin was placed under a recycling sign. So, that, uh, so people, again, were following the signs and just uh, placed a large amount of paper in that area for that day. There was uh, no waste in, for the office recycling. They did a very good job of, of maintaining all that. Uh, most of it was just aluminum and paper, especially from the Glacier office. After the, the audit, uh, I noticed that the, uh, the amount of recycling in the waste was reduced compared to when I first started. Cafe waste also had fewer recyclables and a general improvement overall. Recommend that, again, the changes be maintained and that uh, signs are, and bins are posted throughout the area. Well, at Marine Valley, there is a China program, which means that when, when you go to eat inside the, the cafeteria, you have the option to use uh, reusable China trays as well as, uh, as reusable cutlery. This should, should be encouraged for anybody who is eating inside for the day. In regards to disposable food trays, 
the college should make the switch over to recyclable and compostable food trays. And posters are, are going to be updated from, with the updated versions for marketing. Finally, um, one of the things that Stephanie noticed before I came here was that some of the dumpsters were not being used properly. One of the things she showed me to, to take a look at was a survey in, of the dumpsters and keep a log of the materials that, that were inside. I'm going to, to cover the, the things that I found. At, one of the things I noticed, although not a major issue, was the picket fre frequency. Occasionally, some of the landfill wouldn't be picked up, and the garbage would sit there from, example, from Thursday all the way until next Wednesday. Improper waste and hazardous waste disposal was an issue. We found, found a lot of cardboard and hazardous, and a few times some hazardous waste in the landfill bins, as, as well as recycling and landfill mixing. I'm sorry, recycling and landfill mixing. This is a dumpster outside of, of A building over here. This dumpster is located uh, on, the clo on the closest side to the door, so when people come out of the door to throw things away, like custodians or night staff, they'll, they'll throw uh, the, the bags or the boxes into the nearest bin, which happens to be the dumpster. In this case, I found a number of fluorescent light bulbs, and cardboard drink containers, as well as plastic liners. This is uh, one of the dumpsters over by F building. I found a number, this happened a few times. I, on seven occasions, I found seven, uh, I found fluorescent bulbs that had been thrown into the dumpster instead of brought behind the P building to be collected and returned to the manufacturer for recycling. This is a dangerous situation because these light bulbs contain mercury and when uh, broken, that can vaporize and go out into the atmosphere. I had to make sure I didn't uh, breathe in any, any of the air from that dumpster when I was taking this picture. This is um, a canister of, of refrigerant. This is refrigerant 134A. It's not the most harmful of, uh, type of refrigerant, but it's still not something we want to have in our environment. This, uh, this can could have been recycled or reused. This is uh, an, at the dumpster outside of T building, which doesn't have a recycling bin. So even though they have recycling li like this, they, there's nothing that they can do about it because they only have the one bin. So you end up with all the recycling that was uh, uh, captured in, in the bins, still brought out to the dumpsters and being landfilled. This is outside of B building. There were a, a large number of the Moraine Valley uh, booklets. Uh, I, didn't, I had another picture, but my phone uh, accidentally deleted it. I took out all these paper bins, uh, these paper bales, and I stacked them up to about as tall as I was, and there was over 100 pounds of paper, and that was still only about half of the amount that was in the dumpster that day. And I'm guessing that people did this because the recycling dumpster is behind the landfill dumpster. So they just went to the closest thing that they could. This is the dumpster by M building. There's also no recycling dumpsters there as well. So when they have catered events or other large meetings, we end up with all these disposable, single use, and recyclable containers being thrown into the landfill. Cardboard was a major issue. Had Pretty much every day I went out, and uh, I would always find some cardboard of some variety in the landfill bins, even if there was a recycling bin right next to it. And again, a T building doesn't have recycling bins, so you end up with situations like these where scrap metal and plastics and, and other recycling bags are thrown into the landfill. Recommend that during the summer months when uh, campus enrollment is low, the the university switches from three pickups per week down to two, saving a total of $5,000 per three-year contract. Uh, recycling dumpsters should be included in all areas, including especially the two areas that I mentioned before. And the nighttime cleaning crew and departments should be retrained so that they, they are familiar with waste capture practices. I talked with um, Rick Brennan, head of campus operations, and he noted that a lot of the departments do uh, throw out their own cardboard boxes. So it's not just the nighttime cleaning crew, but also some of the staff in the departments as well. Uh, Campus-wide, this plan is carried out. It has the potential to, uh, to keep approximately 160 tons of CO2 equivalent from entering the atmosphere. Uh, the, this information is, uh, was, was projected from the amount of waste that was reduced in the A building. If uh, we see a similar trend uh, happening across the campus in the next year, these will be the results. Uh, it, I will also, uh, uh, this is part of the recommendations. If 
if uh, the, the landfill bin removal plan is implemented in all the offices, um, this, could, uh, this is a savings of approximately $5,500 per year in can liner savings alone, as well as, there, uh, as keeping a few hundred pounds of, of waste from entering the landfill. Uh, Campus-wide recommendations include pairing all bins in common areas, posting new signs across campuses or across the campus with updated information. Uh, recommend that we continue to educate users on proper recycling practices. This will be done uh, in part through the, the newly formed Go Green Club, and well, under the instruction of the eco representatives that will be hired this fall. Also, uh, the cafe and the catering uh, companies and should switch to recyclable and compostable food containers to reduce waste. The college should also eliminate use of college funds to purchase disposable one-time use food supplies in staff and faculty kitchens. This includes uh, disposable cutlery as well as styrofoam plates and, and cups. People can, can bring in their own uh, plates and mugs from home if they wish, or they can be brought in as part of the department budget. Landfill bins should be removed from the offices and replaced with streamlined collection. Again, just having to, a tall bin and a, a tall landfill and a tall recycling bin does it to reduce the amount of waste, reduce clutter, and create a, an overall pleasant environment. I'd like to thank Moraine Valley and Community College and the Illinois EPA for my time here. This has been a great learning experience. I've, in, I've also uh, increased my skills in project management, public presentations, and report writing. Uh, to learn more about, about these programs, you can visit the Illinois EP website and moraineValley.edu slash sustainability. Does anybody have any questions on the, the projects or programs I conducted here this summer? Thank you. No questions? Thank you, Tim. That was great. And um, having... Uh, be it been his supervisor um, over the time. I think uh, this was a fabulous project. We've learned a lot. And um, Tim mentioned that he did speak with uh, Mr. Brennan. We've presented these findings already to both him and uh, Mr. Duran, Vice President of Administrative Services, and they're very receptive to the findings. So it's pretty exciting work. And then last but not least, we have Brian.
Um, so good afternoon. My name is Brian Wright. Uh, I basically, my, my internship was at Prairie State College, um, working with the Illinois EPA on pollution prevention. And uh, basically the presentation is uh, what I have done uh, along with my colleagues, Tim Marshall and Alessandra Condro Cairo uh, this summer. Uh, so a quick outline of uh, the presentation, basically I'm uh, going to give you some project uh, the project goal that I had, um, college information, um, the initial walkthroughs that we had done, um, initial waste audit results, uh, student survey information that I, that I uh, had the students take, uh, changes that we implemented, uh, the final waste audit results, uh, recommendations, and I'll give you a little bit of the secondary project that uh, I was conducting. And, and still conducting uh, to this day. Uh, so basically, uh, I had a, a the, first, the primary goal was to conduct a waste audit, uh, basically look at the college's uh, waste sources and try to minimize them um, and give some recommendations uh, at the end. So Prairie State, uh, they have 11,700 students uh, enrolled in the fall and spring of last year. Um, and this summer it was 2,900 students on campus, which is a big drop off. Um, it was kind of hard to get you know, accurate data based off of the drop off, um, but we managed. Um, so two, it was 280 full-time faculty members and there's six buildings uh, on the main campus and one satellite uh, building or one, one building on the satellite campus. So our initial walkthrough um, and, and what I'm going to focus in on uh, for the walkthrough is the main building. There's five buildings but there's one main building. Um, so our initial walkthrough uh, is basically four levels to Prairie State um, and what we saw uh, was a bunch of bins like these um, and they had different colors they were all different sizes um, and a bunch of different uh, uh, labels uh, on them um, so we had this green one right here it, it was labeled mixed recycling uh, bottle can and paper uh, this one right here trash only um, we had these two right here that were for trash and for recycling. And this one right here pretty much gave me the biggest problem because it's labeled paper only, but it's for trash. Um, and then we also had these trash bins over here. So here are some of the labels that we found on the green recycling bins. Uh, we got mixed recycling again, and we got uh, empty bottles, cans, and paper. And then on the side of it, it just says cans, glass, and plastic, which, you know, if you're looking at it, you're looking kind of funny as to what can I actually put into this thing, you know? So um, here's a layout of the campus, uh, of the main building, uh, the first floor. And basically what you see which way are we going here? I guess what you see here are just trash cans, the, the, the ones that I labeled here, okay? And they're, they're all by themselves, lonely, no recycling bin with them. They were, you know, mm, deprived. <laughs> um, also, we have here are uh, the black trash cans and black recycling bins, those pair that I showed you earlier. Uh, here also in here, and this is actually the cafeteria area, um, but we also have a, a black trash uh, bin by itself over here. Uh, then if you walk down, down the hallway uh, towards a pair of stairs, uh, we have mixed recycling in one of those green bins just by itself, you know, no, no trash bin next to it. Um, here by the uh, workout room uh, and the tech building or tech area, we have a pair of uh, trash and recycling uh, and that's that paper only, but it's labeled for trash. So that's what the pot means. And here's my little key right here for those. Um, and so here we have a set of trash only and mixed recycling. So if we go to the second floor, uh, similar layout where we have uh, black trash, black recycling, black trash, black recycling by the elevator. Um, 
mixed recycling, trash only, black trash, black recycling, uh, black trash, black recycling, and uh, paper only and can recycling, bottle or bottle can and paper recycling. So, I mean, if I'm here, or if, or if I'm here, I don't know whether or not I can, you know, put, put paper in there or, or what, you know, because there's actually, on these black trash and black recycling, there's no labeling at all, okay? So, uh, third floor, um, so we got a, a recycling bin just by itself over here, um, and then we have a pair put together recycling and trash, uh, black trash, black recycling, and another pair put together. Um, in the fourth floor, I know you guys are like, man, it's, it's kind of weird how, because here, unlike here, we actually have nothing. There's no trash, no recycling, it's just a vacant area. Um, but we do have a recycling bin just out in the open in this hallway, which kind of baffled me when I saw it, but it was there. Um, and so, so we did an initial waste sort to uh, get a baseline of the data that we had as far as waste management. Um, and it was done on the 12th of June. Um, me and Tim Marshall, that guy right there, if you guys don't know. Uh, we basically uh, sat on the dock and we waited for the cleaning crew to come out with the bags and they separated from recycling and trash um, through, through their morning walkthrough. Um, there's a night crew that does like all the offices. We basically concentrated on the hallways and the cafeteria area. So that's us in action. That's, that's me, that guy right there, that handsome guy. And that's Tim. I, he's not so handsome. But anyway, so, so we separated the, uh, the trash and recycling. Uh, we did an initial way. Um, and then we, or we separated, uh, we opened up the bags and then we separated paper, plastic, uh, metals, glass and trash. And that's me on the ground with my uh, $10 uh, food scale, which, yeah, I should have put some more money into that thing. Um, but yeah, we, good times, good times. Um, so here are the results. Um, so a total, total waste, 50 pounds basically. Um, and a lot of it's trash, which was a good thing. It wasn't like it was, majority of a recycling bin, but there was, you know, enough recycling to be concerned. Like he said, Tim said, if it's over 10, or I'm sorry, let me back up. Let me not even say what I just said. So, um, so, so the trash, it was 70% trash, but then we had basically 30% uh, recyclables that were in the trash, okay? Um, and back to what I was gonna say, for the recycling, um, we had 16% of trash in the recycling uh, receptacles, which again, if they do an audit and say, well, it's over 10%, then we're going to get fined, okay? So after we finished this, um, after we finished this waste sort, uh, we said to ourselves, um, well, we really need to know where this stuff is coming from. So the second uh, waste sort that we did on the 17th, we basically walked around with the crew and separated the uh, trash and recycling based off of floors. Okay, first floor, second floor, third floor, and fourth. And this is us in action again. These action shots are great, right? So we're getting dirty, it's, I've got to admit, this is probably the nastiest thing I've ever done in my life. But for those who actually collect waste, they get paid a lot, so. But I commend them. I commend them. Um, so this is us uh, getting the trash out. Um, we did a sort again uh, where we separated plastics, uh, papers, trash, and everything. Uh, and here's the data for the first floor. Um, again, thir 37 uh, pounds worth of uh, waste in the bins. Um, we still had issues, or we're seeing issues with the plastic. Uh, it's a lot of plastic, a lot of paper in the bins. Uh, percent wise here. Um, we also did the recycling again on the first floor we had basically 20, 20 pounds uh, and we had basically 8% uh, of trash in the bins. Here's the data for the second floor. Uh, it gets a little better. 
Uh, but again, you still have you know pieces of recycling, or, or pieces of plastic and paper and metals, aluminum cans basically, uh, in the waste bins. Um, but uh, again, you're 20%. That's that's something that could be captured. Uh, and recycling basically had 3% of uh, of trash. And here's for the third floor. Uh, it gets a little hectic here. And this the third floor is actually where a bunch of classrooms and labs are located. So I think I'm going to blame it on the students this time. You know, any professors here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, there are classrooms there also, but it, it's mainly you know students walking through the hallways and things like that, throwing away their their, their trash or they're recycling uh, into the trash bins. Um, so it's basically forty percent that that was captured in the waste, and then over here uh, it was only two percent of our trash in the uh, recycling bins. And here's the fourth floor. Um, no trash in the recycling, basically, and 15% uh, or 16% of, uh, of recyclables in the trash. So when we look at the total of everything, um, we got 50, 50 or, or 40, 46 pounds, 47 pounds worth of uh, total, total trash in the bins or total in the trash bins, and uh, basically, 20, 22% of our recyclables that could have been captured. And here we have 6% uh, percent of uh, trash in those recycling bins. So uh, the big thing that we saw was 80% of the whole entire sort was from the first floor. And roughly about 90% of the first floor's uh, waste and recycling came from the cafeteria. So cafeteria produces a lot of, of uh, waste, and, and it's mostly waste. And, and that's going to, and, that, that, and that's because they, give the, they have these takeout trays. Um, they're made out of paper, but they have the waxy film to them. And they also get, they also uh, become greasy from the nice, lovely pizza that they, uh, that they put in these. Um, also, because of these styrofoam uh, containers that are, that are non-recyclable, you know, people actually put these in the recycling bin because they may have a number on them, but they're actually non-recyclable. Um, so we conducted a student survey, and it took a little longer than, than expected. Um, it went from uh, June 23rd to July 3rd. Um, and that's basically because uh, the first, I guess, two, three days that I, I, I sat out in the atrium where most of the students walk uh, before and after class, and I politely asked them, you know, hey, can you guys take a survey? And people blew me off. Even though I was raffling away a gift card to uh, Savers. Anybody know what Savers is? It's like, a, it's like a thrift store. You can go in there and get anything. It was free, you know? Um, so I only, I only had maybe like 45 uh, respondents or, or participants in the survey. So we opened it up and we actually email blasted all the students uh, for the summertime and we ended up with 100. And 100 is not really a, a decent number, but it was workable, you know, it gave me something. So. So some of the questions that we asked, or this, these are all the questions that we asked, 1 through 12. Uh, your daily life, so that's outside of campus, you know, everywhere you go. Uh, how often do you recycle? We had a uh, majority of the students say often or always, uh, which is a great thing. And then we had some students that say sometimes, which means, hey, you know, I may throw this plastic in here in the recycling bin at some point in time, but maybe I won't, you know, depending on how I feel. Um, and then we had the rare lease, which that's, that's tough. I guess all of us in here support, support sustainability, right? And it's tough to hear someone say, well, I rarely recycle, when it's probably one of the easiest things you can do in life. Um, so uh, we also asked, uh, uh, do, do you understand the terms commingled and uh, single streamed? And 
Uh, 80 to 90 percent of the students did not understand any of these, and that to me is not really a big problem as long as you know, you know, how to actually recycle. You know, you maybe you may not know the terms, but as long as you actually know how to recycle, that's the important thing. But obviously they're unaware of these, uh, these definitions, so uh, maybe some education uh, should be provided. And that's in my recommendations at the end. Um, we also uh, asked, uh, with uh, re regards to conserving the environment, how important do you believe recycling is? Uh, some people said, uh, most people said extremely or very important, and then you know you got those some that believe, hey, it's not that important. And, and again, I, I think because these are students and they're still in the non-parental mode of life where they say, hey, I don't care about anyone but myself, you know, you got to leave something for the future. Um, so, so this was a concern to me. Um, and then it says, Rachel level agreement with the following, choose from scale, strongly agree to disagree, uh, have an understanding of what materials can be recycled. A lot of students, they understand what can be recycled. Um, when you get down to here, the numbers start to dwindle off a little bit on how to recycle on campus. So people aren't aware. That, again, we have those bins, those funny signs, and I don't know what to do with this. That I have this paper, does it go in here? Does it not go in here, okay? Um, also, where to recycle on campus, uh, the numbers start to dwindle off too because I guess they're unaware of, hey, I can place this here or is that an actual bin for recycling or not? Um, then we asked, uh, uh, there, uh, select your uh, level of agreement with the following, uh, strongly agree to disagree. There are things that I want to recycle on campus, but I'm not sure how to recycle them. Um, some people said we strongly agree. They say I don't have a clue, okay. Um, some people said they agree, um, but majority of the people were in the neutral and, dis and strong disagree. Now, if they answered strongly agree and agree, it actually went to the uh, next one where it says, uh, please list and describe those things that you're unsure of how to recycle. And batteries, big one, because it's, it's listed twice or three times on here, okay? And I just got some information that you can actually, or it's recommended that you throw batteries away, which is very strange. but. Um, also, styrofoam, uh, potato chip bags, uh, plastics, uh, electronics, big thing, um, and old textbooks, soda cans, and, and basic recycling material like over, or, or these basic recycling materials. Um, so then uh, it says, uh, please indicate how easy it is to recycle the following materials. Uh, people believe it's very easy or the easiest to recycle uh, paper on campus. Um, then we come in with plastics, uh, metal cans, which is, it's, it's kind of funny because most of the trash or most of the recycling bins have the actual uh, circle to them and you think that somebody, hey, it looks like a trash can. But anyway, um, and then cardboard came in last. Uh, to be difficult, I guess because people don't believe that you can actually just sit cardboard there and the, the cleaning company will uh, pick it up. Um, so, uh, so the next one says, how easy is it to recycle the following in the following locations? Uh, the atrium uh, got 50% of being very easy, which I don't know if people were actually reading this because the atrium has no recycling bins. So it kind of shocked me on that one. But um, the cafeteria is where most of the recycling bin or most of those uh, black trash, black uh, recycling bins are located, so it's very easy there. Uh, classrooms, uh, some people said, or most people were in between here. Um, and I talked to a few students and they said that, you know, there's no recycling in my classroom. And we actually did walk-arounds where there wasn't any, or there weren't any uh, recycling bins in the classroom, so that's one of my projects when I get back to, because everyone's gone now, I can actually go around and go into classrooms and place bins 
there. Um, so hallways, uh, pretty easy uh, for for majority of them. And then outside in the parking lot, uh, it's pretty difficult because we actually don't have any recycling bins in the parking lots. Um, there's maybe I, like maybe two or three entry entry doors that actually have recycling and trash uh, there. So yes, I, I can see where they were coming from with this. Um, then we asked, uh, uh, when you're on campus and the opportunity presents itself, how often do you recycle? So this is on campus. Um, we had some people, or we had most people say, hey, often and always. Um, some people, will, again, the sometimes they're kind of unsure. And then we had a bunch say rarely. And then the never one, like, that's it's kind of baffling again. But you know, it's just me. Um, and then the next one says, would, uh, would recycling uh, strongly agree or disagree? I would recycle more on Prairie State campus if uh, the following things were there. Uh, if there were more signs, they recycle more. Uh, if there were more receptacles, uh, they agree about that. Uh, my teachers encouraged me. So this is coming from professors. You know, just a little bit of encouragement. It may help. Um, it may or may not help. Um, and peers, also peer interaction with recycling. Uh, is a very important thing. Um, and the, this was a list of uh, the things that they are aware of as far as sustainability. A uh, bunch of things here that uh, Prairie State actually does as of right now. Um, green parking. A lot of people aren't aware of this. Um, that's because electric vehicles aren't that popular right now. And hopefully it soon will be um, in the near future. Um, so we have op optional uh, comments at the end of the survey. Uh, he said we're doing a great job, which I loved. Um, but uh, the, the big one that I, that what I was concerned with was uh, that instead of wasting paper in the public restrooms, we, you should switch to uh, hand dryers. Um, and that's one of the things that we actually walked around and looked at be at the end of the presentation. Um, so based on the information, uh, it says, or from, from the questions and, and the results, uh, students do not always recycle, obviously from the, the waste audits. Um, students are unaware of the modern recycling practices uh, that are available. And students would also like better signage, uh, bin location, and some uniformity. So I had a conversation a couple conversations uh, with our graphic design artists at Prairie State. Um, and I gave her my ideals of, of new signage. And um, this wasn't the first one that she came up with. Uh, this was actually the second one, because I was informed that our recycling company uh, does not recycle glass. So glass was on here at the end, um, but it got taken off because they, it's just not a hot commodity right now. At some point, it may come back uh, because you hear all the studies about plastic being dangerous and stuff like that and so on and so forth. But this is what we actually came up for uh, new signage uh, for paper, plastic, and aluminum. Put it all in one bin, so on and so forth. So. Uh, instead of buying new containers because of uh, budget constraints, um, I decided to basically get some spray paint, uh, go out into the middle of uh, Prairie State's uh, campus on a, on a couple of 85-degree uh, days with a sweatshirt <laughs> and a respirator and glasses and gloves and pants and boots. And I uh, basically spray painted maybe 12 or 13 of these. Um, and what I wanted to do was I basically wanted to get rid of the uh, sign right here, um, the cans, glass, and plastic, obviously, because we don't recycle glass anymore. Um, 
but just to make sure, you know, people actually can put paper in this. So what I ended up with was this over here, and obviously you can't see it from the side, but the side is blue. Um, the whole container is blue. I even got the metal piece blue. Everything's blue um, to match up with the, uh, the blue bags that we have for recycling. And I put uh, the signage on the front here, and wherever uh, it, it was allowed or, or it was available, I actually posted uh, on the wall, the sign also, you know, for those who need glasses like myself and so on and so forth. Um, also, I took the, uh, the paper only trash bins and I painted them gray. And again, you can't see it from the side. I don't know why I didn't take side shots, but uh, I basically got rid of the paper only. Um, you could still, you know, press on it and things like that, but it's, it's gray now and I uh, labeled it landfill, uh, no recyclables. So our uh, final waste audit, uh, so we had two sorts, um, basically the same uh, procedures as uh, the second uh, initial waste audit where we went around with the cleaning crew, um, separated by floor. And here's the data. Uh, kind of disheartened me uh, about this data because still 25% of 25% uh, recyclables in the uh, waste bin. Um, and actually the, the trash increased. And I don't really have any valid theories on this, um, but I'm thinking because they saw, you know, just plastic. Just throw that in there. And paper. I throw it without actually reading, you know, what you're supposed to do. And so um, it's kind of disheartening. But so so we uh, so we went to the second floor, and and the second floor looked a little bit better. And and the reason, you know, the, again, this is the cafeteria area. So I took that in mind as a cafeteria area, so got to be patient. So went to the second floor, uh, saw a little bit better results. Um, basically 17% of uh, the, uh, the, the sort was recyclables here, and we had a decrease in refuse, uh, 3%. Uh, third floor. Got a little bit better. Only eight percent of uh, of this total sort was uh, recyclables, and then we had nine percent of trash for the recycle uh, sort. And then um, again on the fourth floor, fifteen percent recyclables in the trash, and uh, it was. And it, I mean, it's it's a little amount. But percent-wise, yeah, that's kind of it's kind of tough, tough to swallow. But if you look at the overall, um, basically had nine percent, which is under the ten, in the uh, recyclables, um, and uh, it ended up being like twenty percent uh, recyclables in the uh, trash. So the same thing. Uh, that happened on the first day. We did it on the, the second day, which was the 20, uh, 23rd of July. Um, but the thing about this one was all those trash bins from the atrium, I removed them and put two there along with recycling bins um, to see uh, any difference uh, in the behaviors of the students. Um, and the ones that you see in asterisk, and again, this is the first floor, that's where the atrium is. Um, the ones you see in asterisks are the, uh, the spots in the atrium where we had the two bins located along with the, uh, the recycling bins. Um, so it collected the trash in those bins, but it's still, you know, even, even though there's a recycling bin right there, people were still throwing uh, plastics into the, uh, the waste bin. But you know, an upside of it was we did actually collect some recyclables in the recycling bins that were placed there, even though there was 
uh, some trash there. Uh, so, I mean, I think it's a win situation, in my in my opinion. But people have their own opinions, I guess. So, uh, so second floor, uh, basically a little bit of improvement, uh, 13%. Uh, recyclables in the trash, 2% uh, of trash and recycling. Uh, it's a good thing, I guess. Um, there was no uh, recycling in the trash on the third floor, but it was a small amount of uh, trash there. And uh, again, under 10% for the third floor as far as trash in the recycling. And we have a little, little up, uptick for uh, trash and recycling here, um, and again, 14% of recyclables, and it's only paper, and I said that like it was a good thing, only paper, still recyclable, um, in the uh, trash bins. So the total uh, ended up being 15% uh, after the implementation uh, here uh, for the second day of, of uh, waste sorting and 6% of, of trash in the recycling. So, quick analysis of what took place. Uh, so before we implemented the changes, it was about 27% recyclables in the, tra in the trash bins or waste bins. Um, after the implementation, we took the average of the two days, it was 18%. Um, so, it's, you know, 9%. I'll round it off to 10 to make me feel happy. Um, uh, so, so I basically gathered the uh, bills, the, the bills uh, for the trash and waste. And on an average, Prairie State basically spends uh, $2,200 a month on waste hauling. Um, if they can implement uh, some of the recommendations that I'm going to give and continue uh, with the push to uh, improve the recycling program and remove this 18% of the recyclables in the uh, trash bins, they can save roughly $396 a month um, for a total of $4,752 a year on waste costs. Um, and obviously if they increase their recycling, uh, I, I, I did some, uh, some calculations, basically 19 uh, dollars per yard per month that they spend on waste and it's just seven bucks uh, per yard per month on recycling so obviously if you increase the recycling you save more money on the uh, on the cost um, so another thing that we did was a washroom uh, walkthrough uh, and some positive things that Prairie State has is that they have uh, folded bathroom tissue dispensers. And this is like the first time I've ever seen this. Maybe because I don't get out enough, I guess. I don't know. But um, basically, instead of having a roll, basically, it's basically like tissue. You just pull it down. So instead of having that, that roll at the end for waste, they eliminated that. So you just keep refilling it just like you would fill a tissue, uh, uh, a portable tissue box. Um, also have motion sensing lights, so if no one's in the bathroom, you know, for a period of time, they turn off, and then as soon as someone step in, steps in, they turn on. Um, and just like most commercial buildings, they have push button or automatic uh, on and off sinks. Um, the big thing that we saw, negative-wise, is that uh, 22 out of the 26 uh, bathrooms in the main uh, building do not have uh, hand dryers. So they're basically an only way to dry your hands is through the paper towel dispensers, um, which uh, can increase your waste. And we actually didn't uh, calculate the waste in the bathrooms, and that was for sanitary reasons. Um, yeah, I didn't want to catch anything because we when I when we did uh, Tim's waste audit, we we took the, the bathroom waste and there were some things in there that none of you would want to touch so we decided not to do that for this um, 
Uh, so a random finding that I found uh, walking around campus uh, one day uh, was this, there were these two boxes, this box here, this box here. Um, and I, I took a Zoom picture of it. And basically what this is, is uh, old uh, physics slash science equipment that was laying out in the hallway. And I grabbed the uh, cleaning crew uh, while they were coming up the stairs and I asked them, you know, was this marked for uh, electronic waste? And they actually said, no, it's going straight to the dumpster. Now, I am a, uh, a high school science teacher and our funds at our school are pretty low. Um, I would love to have most of this equipment in here that was, that was bound for the garbage can. Um, but state law says that I can't take it. So, you know. So what, what I did was I actually hauled this down to, uh, down the stairs to uh, the loading dock and I asked uh, one of the cleaning crew uh, or, or buildings and grounds uh, gentlemen to actually haul this over to uh, our electronic waste disposal. Uh, but I found it alarming that no one put any marks on this to say, hey, take it over there. Um, so some recommendations. And it's, it's kind of lengthy, right? Anyway, um, so because of, uh, uh, because of the fact that a lot of the waste came from the cafeteria area, um, and those disposable trays, food trays, um, I recommend that they either put in a system where they have reusable dishes um, or uh, recyclable plastic food containers. Um, now, I actually researched these and these are pretty expensive. Um, and I really don't know the cost or, or the, the the amount that it would cost to actually get someone to uh, to install a dishwashing service in the cafeteria, because as of right now, they don't have one. Um, but it can go either way. Uh, uh, the staff should request uh, reusable utensils during uh, catered events. Uh, my supervisor, Alessandra, she actually does this. Um, and I don't know how many people are actually aware that they can actually do this uh, themselves, because Actually, uh, I saw a uh, luncheon that they had for some of the staff members, and they were basically using the takeout containers, the styrofoam containers and things like that, carrying from the auditorium back up to their office. So I don't know if anyone's aware of that. Um, continued sustainability outreach uh, during campus events like orientation or you know gatherings and things like that. Uh, and through email to inform staff members that we do have electronic uh, waste disposal uh, because obviously uh, the person that put the uh, electronic waste out was unaware. Um, pair every trash bin uh, with a recycling bin just so that you can catch all the recycling possible uh, because I know, you know some people are in a tight jam and you know, hey, I want to just throw it away. So they just throw it away instead of actually seeking out a recycling bin. Um, this one was for the uh, electronic uh, equipment that I found, or the, the science equipment. Uh, create a partnership with local schools to donate the equipment. I mean, what's the best practice? Reuse, right? Or we reduce first, and then reuse, and then you recycle, right? So. Uh, I, I know there's tons of schools out there that would love to reuse some of that science equipment that they had and some of the tech equipment that they have in their building. Uh, train and retrain some of the cleaning crew on the recycling policy. Uh, I saw something that was really disturbing uh, one day where I believe someone cleaned out their office and they basically dumped a bunch of paper into a uh, recycling bin. It was green recycling bin. Um, and because there was no bag in the recycling bin, uh, I saw the cleaning crew basically take all that stuff, 
dump it into the trash. Um, I wanted to stop her, but you know I'm not the boss, so I, I don't want to, you know, die basically. Um, so uh, yeah, basically uh, retraining or train those who are new uh, on the recycling policies and how we can uh, increase recycling. Um, basically ask professors to take a few minutes uh, at the beginning of their school uh, semester, fall, spring, uh, summer, um, discuss recycling in classrooms and throughout campus. Um, again, it was, it was on the survey. It may improve recycling, it may not, but it's worth a shot, right? Um, place recycling bin at every entry door. Um, if possible, I know budgets are tight in the college or academic field. So depending on how much we have in the budget, I uh, place recycling bins at every entry door. Um, <laughs> uh, replace paper towel dispensers with hand dryers. And uh, I still believe in this. Uh, you can purchase uh, used battery disposal containers. You know, you may collect a lot, and actually, I, I know because I attend IIT that they use they use some of those uh, batteries for uh, projects in their labs. Um, so that was my primary uh, project. Um, my secondary project is currently in pro progress. Um, some rough data that I just put together. Uh, I was asked to. To show you guys this, I'm kind of unprepared. Um, but basically, what it was was it was looking at uh, conducting a greenhouse gas emissions inventory um, of the college as a whole. Um, and basically, what it, what you do is you start out by looking at the bills of your gas consumption and your electricity consumption, uh, and you you get some data on how much you're consuming here. And uh, you, you, you go to uh, degreedays.net, and, and it's this, uh, this pop-up window that actually uh, that's provided by Weather Underground. Um, it gives you the heating degree days, which is a mathematical uh, formula. It takes the integrals of temperature over time and, or yeah, temperature over time and things like that. And it basically tells you uh, when you're when you're supposed to heat and when you're supposed to cool. Um, so this is this was our, our cost that we had, um, and this was actually the unit cost uh, that we had uh, or that the college has for those months, of February uh, or July 12th through June 13th. So here is a, a graphic or a plot of this information here to where we see that this is uh, the gas that's consumed and gas is usually used for heating, right? So as you can see, the heating uh, degree days, they started to increase um, and we started to increase our gas consumption. Um, oh, I'm sorry, wait, wait, go back. And here are the cooling degree days. Uh, they increase or they start to decrease here. And obviously, we start to increase the gas consumption. Uh, here is the uh, electricity consumption uh, during July uh, uh, 2012 to June 2013. Um, and here's the consumption. And it's a lot of numbers, so it looks better. I believe in a table form. So here are the heating degree, degree days again and the cooling degree days. As you can see, it correlates with the cooling degree days as far as electricity consumption because you use air conditioning, right? So uh, basically from this, I was able to uh, calculate the amount of CO2 output um, of the main building. Um, and electricity-wise, the CO2 output was uh, 5,199 tons, and natural gas uh, CO2 output was 1,028 tons. 
and I am not finished with that data. I still will be crunching numbers tonight um, into tomorrow morning. Um, but it's a work in progress. Uh, and that was it. I'd like to thank you guys for allowing me to present. Um, I'd like to thank the EPA for allowing me to uh, participate in this internship. I learned a lot. Um, I learned that because I, I'm an actual teacher, um, that having a desk job is the toughest thing that you can do as a person, um, just focusing and sitting there. But it was interesting. It was interesting the whole summer, digging in the trash and things like that. It was, it was great times, great times. Are there any questions for me? Crickets, I love them. <laughs> Thank you. Questions for Brian? Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to thank everybody here in the audience for coming and listening to these presentations. This was a pretty phenomenal project. I think everybody's projects were really impressive and very well done. I know I've learned a lot just sitting here listening. I've learned a lot from working with Tim as well. I'd like to thank the Illinois EPA for this great opportunity as well. Rick, it was perfect working with you to select the interns. Um, and especially, you know, for Moraine Valley, if I may, just take this minute um, to thank our pilot areas, the CTL and the library, as well as the U Building and Cafe and all the staff and faculty and students who were involved in that, and then the A Building and campus operations being um, totally open to us going around and moving things about and whatnot. Uh, everybody's been a fantastic sport. It's been um, a really great experience. And um, Tim told me that on the last waste audit, he wanted to give a shout out to the ladies of tech services downstairs because they managed to do everything 100% accurate on that last day. So. so again, thank you. And I'd like to welcome you over to the, um, the library lounge area where we've got a reception with some punch and fruit and veggies and cookies and whatnot to enjoy. And you can ask any other um, specific questions you want. So thank you so much. <laughs>